All right, this is number 13 dedicated to first period. So here we go. We're going to start with the front view. I'm going to go nine squares over because it's 2.25. This is the drawing. And now I'm going to do the entire height, which is 0.5 plus 0.25, which is 0.75, and then another 0.75 for 6 up. And I'm going to draw this pretty light because I know I'm going to end up erasing a lot of it. Okay, I know that this piece here is 0.5 tall, so I'm going to draw a line two boxes up to make the little shelf. And you know, I'm actually going to draw straight. There we go. And uh, we're going to st start the mountains. To figure out where the mountains are, you have to figure out where these peaks are. And since I know that this is Okay, so we're doing the peaks here, and to figure out where the peaks go, you need to realize that this center line tells me that the entire part is symmetrical. So whatever's going on on this side is the same on this side. And I know that the entire distance is 2.25. Then I know that this the distance between the two peaks is 0.75. The width of the peak itself is 0.25 and 0.25 on the other side. If you add all three of those numbers up, you get 1.25. If I subtract that, I get 1 inch. And since it's symmetrical, I'm going to divide by 2, which is going to give me 0.5. So if I were to draw a box here, from this corner of the box to where this starts is 0.5. So what I'm going to do is, here's the box that I was talking about. I'm going to count over two. And this third little square is going to be the peak. And the third little square over here is going to be the peak. I can go ahead and erase this if it's bothering me. Okay, and now I just need to figure out where the center of this thing is going to be. Since it's in the center, it's going to be over one, two, three, four. It's going to be this fifth square. And it comes down two blocks from the, the top of the peak. And then I'm just going to connect the dots. This connects here because this little corner here is 0.25. And I'm just connecting the, the lines together to finish forming that front view. Okay, and then I'm going to erase these construction lines, and there's the front view of number 13. I'm going to start the top view next. I'm going to skip two grids between my drawing making sure that these line up. And then I need to figure out the depth because you guys know that top view has width and depth. And the depth on this is 1.5, which is six grids. And you guys know that Wherever you have a line in one view, a corner in one view, you're going to have a line in the other view. I also know that I have this shelf, so if I'm looking straight down on this thing, there's this shelf that's 0.5 wide on either side. I'm going to go ahead and draw those in. So I went up two and up two again. And that's the shelf. If I was looking straight down on this, I would see this surface and this surface here. 
Now, wherever you have a corner in one view, you're going to have a line in the other. I know these little mountain tops are only in this middle section because that's the part that sticks up. I'm going to line it up. I'm going to draw the lines. I also have corners here, so I'm going to draw these lines too. And over here. And that's the top view of number 13. So you each, this is this surface here. This rectangle is this surface here. And this rectangle is this surface here. The, these slopes are foreshortened. That's why they, and they're flat, flattened. That's why they look like little rectangles here. There is no real way to get a true size and shape of a sloped surface unless you draw an auxiliary view. And we're going to get to that next semester. Now I'm going to come over one, two grid dots and to draw the side view. And remember, front and side share height. So I'm going to draw that. And then the depth is always going to be the same as this measurement over here in your front view. So that's, I mean, in your top view. So that's six. So this is conveniently a square. Remember, guys, it's not always a square. It just happens that way on this one. Okay, and that's totally crooked and I'm gonna fix it because it'll drive me crazy. That's not much better, but. So now I know I have a corner here, so I'm gonna have a line over here. So I'm gonna project that across and I'm looking at my side view. And if I was looking at the right side of this, I would see this T surface. And then I would see this, which is uh, this thing in the ISO that looks like an angle. But because we can't, it's not going to be, draw, it's drawn flat, it's not going to be an angle. It's going to be just a small rectangle. So I know that this piece here to make the little T comes over 0.5. So I'm going to come over 2 and go up 1 to create the T, and over 2 to make the top of the little T, and then back down. And I'm going to erase this line that I drew here because I don't need it. And now this sloped surface here is just going to be drawn here. With the, measure, with the space you have left. Remember, there's no, you really can't draw a true size and shape of a sloped surface in, isom, in orthographic unless you do a um, auxiliary view. So we are going to erase this and we're not worried about auxiliary views right now, but just know they exist. All right. Hang on, gotta get the phone. All right, and that was just Frenzel looking for nine volt batteries. So now the drawing is almost done. We are just missing a hidden line. You guys know wherever you have a corner in one view, you're gonna have a line in the other. So this corner here, which is hidden behind the wall, is going to be represented in this view as a hidden line. So I'm gonna line up my ruler with that corner and I'm going to draw that hidden line over here in the side view. And aside from a cleanup, 13 is done. Enjoy.